Football is a pawn up for now. But Rook and games are notoriously troyish in nature. He goes to d3, threatening a checkmate on f1. Hisham plays his king to c1. Nilotpal can pick up the pawn on f5, but he will also lose his g4 pawn, so he first plays king to c3, once again threatening a mate. Check given by the white rook. King comes back to b4. And now that the f5 pawn is being attacked, white has to decide. He goes back to g6, attacking the g4 pawn. And Nilotpal goes after the a2 pawn. If he is able to create two passers on the queen side, this would be a winning endgame. So rook takes pawn. And now an important moment. Should you take the pawn on a2 or should you take the one on f5? Nilotpal first gives a check. He realizes that the a2 pawn is his to be taken. After king c2, he decides to first take the f5 pawn. Now the a2 pawn is lost and black will be two pawns up with his a and b pawns. King goes back to b1 and a check king c2. Can that pawn be taken on a2? You have to be careful in such end games that as black you do not lose material but Nilotpal has it all calculated. He takes on a2. What is his plan to rook g5 now? Is he going to lose a pawn? Not really because Nilotpal has his reply figured out. He plays his rook to b1 defending these two pawns. Now, here's the inst instructive part of this video. Generally, with these two pawns, the game is winning. First a check. But you need to take a little bit of care. Because if you are not careful, there are stalemate ideas in the position. Rook comes to b4. Black has secured his two extra pawns. None of them are being attacked. A check here. And king moves to a3. There have been games in the past, most notably the game between Ding Lijan and Vidit Gujarati, which has ended in a draw with such pawns. There was also recently Arjun Arigasi who blundered against Aditya Mittal and drew the game. So these two pawns, which are the rook and knight pawns, although connected, need some care to be taken. And we will learn from Nilotpal as to how to win such an endgame. So first Nilotpal brings his king to b4. Now king goes to b2. If you notice, white has no checks in the position. So first he pushes his a pawn down the board. Hisham keeps his rook on the second rank for now. And in order to make progress, you first push a3. Forcing the king to go to a2. And now you move your king away from the b pawn and start pushing the b pawn down the board. King a4, good move. And now the rook goes back to f8, trying to give a check from a8, but first a very nice intermediate check by black. King goes back to a1, and it's time to push the b pawn because now rook a8 check will be met with king b3. So rook b4 is here, rook f4 is played, stopping the pawn from coming further ahead and here Nilotpal plays his rook to c2. King to b1 in the position and you can see Nilotpal taking his time not hurrying it through rook comes back to c6. King a2 And he puts his rook back to h6. So, so you can you can spend some time moving here and there. Now the rook on the fourth rank has to remain there because otherwise the b pawn will move forward. 
here the challenge for nilotpal is how to move his pawns forward his b pawn is pinned and pushing the a pawn would be a mistake after king b1 now a2 is a blunder because after king a1 it's a forced draw so you see he first places his rook to d2 now this is an important move because after you put your rook on d2 white plays rook h4 uh, if king c1 is played then you can already push your pawn to e a2 and now king comes to b3 so what nilotpal is planning to do is firstly he's threatening a checkmate but after you check him he's going to bring his king to c4 now once again b3 is a threat so you give a check and in order to now make progress he plays rook to d4 he could also play king c3 and then block with rook d3 but now rook h3 and with this technique he now pushes his b pawn now it's a mate in one on d1 with the rook so rook goes back to h1 stopping the mate and now starts the next phase of the game so king c3 if rook h3 check then i can always play rook d3 so rook c1 check makes a lot of sense and now the king moves into d2 rook goes to h1 and maybe rook c8 was a more tenacious defense there but rook h1 he played rook to e4 threatening rook e1 check and the game is over now with the rooks traded if you give rook h2 check there is rook e2 and nilotpal shows very fine technique in this rook and two pawns versus rook winning the game both the players analyze with each other after the game this is always so good to see after a decisive game because many times one of the players has lost the game and is upset but here knowledge takes precedence over the result which is very cool to see with this nilotpal is leading the tournament with 6 and 1/2 out of 7 a fantastic performance by the kolkata gm What Nilotpal did in the game until this moment was absolutely great. But here he played his king to c3. And this is not the best idea because after rook c1 check, uh king was played to d2 and now Hisham played rook h1 which allowed rook e4 and then he resigned. But if he had gone rook c8, then Nilotpal would have had a tough time. uh here once again because he has to move his rook and then a check and then he has to come back all the way and then once again he has to create that winning pattern so here's a small thing that you can do in order to win such positions is in such there are two techniques that i want to show one of them is putting the rook on the e file then moving your king in this way and exchanging the rooks So let's say rook c1 king d3 rook h1 king d2 and black wins and if uh, here rook g1 then king c3 check king d2 and once again rooks are traded so this is one way to win the other way to win is also very instructive is to play your king to b4 white has to wait and now you push your rook pawn This is the exact moment where putting your rook pawn on a2 wins. After king b2 you give a check and king to a3. So notice this configuration there is no way in which white can sacrifice his rook over here in order for a stalemate and b2 mate is coming in if rook g3 there is rook d1 checkmate. So here are the two patterns that you should keep in mind. One of them is this one where your king is on a3 pawn on a to b3 and rook here which will result in a checkmate and the other pattern is this one where your king has come to d2 and you're going to exchange the rooks with e1 if you know both these things you will never ever botch up this end game